Nigerians are grieved by fear that organized labor may reactivate a previously suspended nationwide strike as negotiations end today. Well, I'm now being joined by international finance and economic analyst Mukta Mohammed. Good morning to you, Mukta. Thanks for staying with us. Thank you, Justin. Good morning. All right, let's just dive into the matter. It's been uh, five days or about a week of um, talks between uh, the Tripartite Committee, the labor unions, organized private sector, and the federal government. You know, talks end uh, today. So do we see another strike happening? What would have, you know, labor asking for 250? And, uh, you know, the organized private sector and the federal government saying they can, uh, 62,000 are is okay. What are your thoughts, really? Well, um Justin, I think we discussed this sometime last week. <laughs> yes, we did. I think, oh. And I told you that it seems like if the government is just playing politics with labor or trying to be, the president promised uh, a wage above 60,000 and that a wage above 50,000 to assume it's adding 2,000. I don't think the government is being sincere with labor, even if I say labor demand to is, uh, is on the high side. But Again, adding 3,000, adding 2,000, government foreign coming out to say, no, we cannot even pay that 60,000. The highest we can do is 58,000. It shows the government that is taking the Nigerian workers for granted. That's, that's basically what I, I think. Oh. I, I know uh, organized private sector have their own challenges, oh. but you and I know that uh, the minimum wage in organized private sector is, is even higher than, than that what the, the, the public civil servants spend. Oh. Now, this is the challenge for the organized private sector, why they are saying they cannot pay the minimum wage has to do with a lot of uh, policy that the government have put in place that has not really helped the organized private sector grow. Uh, that have not mm -hmm. helped the organized private sector grow. Mm. So it, 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 it has not helped them. So definitely uh, the organized private sector have their own challenges which have to do with some of the policy of government like uh, uh, um, the introduction of um, 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 electrical tariff, the issue that has to do with importation tariff that have been coming in from some of these government uh, policies as well as that of the port. So these have caused me cost of uh, um, 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 doing business high, high interest rate because of the hike by the CBN and all that. So we understand the plight of the organized private sector and the organized private sector seems to be telling the government in one hand that, you know what, if you want us to pay, there are some other policies that you need to do to take us to, to pay. Otherwise, if we have to pay like that, we have to bring down our 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 staff strength. For me, oh. um, the organized private sector, that's why I think a labor should be uh, moderate in their demand. Oh. Because if you put the minimum wage at the price, at, at what you are trying to do, then the organized private pressure of sector will have no option than to do job um, losses. But be as it may, but I still think that um, government should take a buy their revenue. If they take a buy their revenue, then the yeah. organized private sector will be able to pay a living wage to their, to their because that means cost of business will come down. Yeah. If you put a uh, tariff rate on some of these goods and services, you remove those tariff rates, yeah. get those organized private sector businesses, the manufacturing and other. If you try to see how you can stabilize the exchange rate, all this will help bring down their cost and that will help them be able to pay. Oh. And then you look at the electricity tariff also, you look at it, well, how can you help the organized private sector to pay less of those tariffs? So all this will help them to okay. be able to pay. So it's all about government looking at um, it holistically and be very truthful and honest oh. in how you want to, to, to make sure that, because government, as far as I'm concerned, up yeah. to this moment, Hmm. Governors, government have not so sincerity in honesty. Okay. Okay. Let me just uh, put it differently or maybe try and just summarize all that you have said. Invariably, uh, if a government uh, were to do its own part in uh, stabilizing um, the infrastructural development, uh, issues of um, power and, of course, uh, energy and all of that, uh, issue of uh, uh, labor losses or job losses uh, would be resolved and indeed uh, you feel that uh, the organized labor should be able to even pay that 60 uh, thousand above 60 thousand naira right look we can pay above 60 thousand and justin mm -hmm. i'm just talking the only place i think we have we have challenge in playing it will be the organized private sector okay but the public servant has no reason why they cannot pay this is a mm -hmm. government that just commissioned uh, 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 the vice president resident 
and they pride themselves that they are the one that commissioned it after 14 years at 21 22 billion this is a government that are giving hash to people that are going to hash for 90 billion this are government last week report came out how they, this governors are in terms of sitting around refurbishment and that and that they've up they've been able to spend over almost a trillion oh. so it's left for government to begin to look at the the wastage that they are doing and begin All to right. reduce their wastage understood so rather than telling the nigerian workers that they cannot pay that amount but for the organized private sector mm. they have their challenges they which do, are listed out there if they have to pay that amount then government yes. will really have to help them All right, let's talk about let's talk about government let's leave the ops for for one minute and talk about the government you have laid down all of them the fact about how governments are expenditure cost of governance is extremely high and if they were to be sincere and uh, you know do the service that they um, were uh, you know elected to in the first instance and nigerians will not even be suffering or even go uh, uh, hungry at this days but the talk of um, state governments now saying they cannot really pay 60,000. I, I hear some states uh, practically still owe 30,000. Is it a thing about the state not looking uh, internally to generate revenue? Because at the end of the month, each time they go cap in hand to the federal government uh, to get this federal uh, FAC, federal allocation and um, account uh, committee every month. Is it that uh, they don't have enough resources or they are channeling it to the wrong places? or that uh, they just don't want to pay? Justin, they just don't want to pay. Okay. Um, let me tell you, government, let me look, look, go to the federal government first before I go to the uh, state government. Federal government, 30,000 Naira minimum wage. They are paying 35,000 Naira allowance, or whatever they call it. So if you look at that, that is 65,000. And here you are offering them 60,000, they're offering yeah. them 62,000, less than what you have been doing for the past six months. Yeah. So that shows that there's no sincerity of purpose because you're already paying 65,000 naira. So all you need to do is to up it and it no more become allowance, it becomes salaries. And I keep saying that also government could also look at structural ways of if you don't have the funds, then you have to, I keep saying, you have to take a bite off your revenue. And then you could tell them that, okay, fine, we're going to, we are going to pay 62,000 or 65,000. But when it will not be taxed, it will be tax free for the next six months. Mm. You begin to, that alone would have in, in, in increased the, 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 the number that you are paying them. So these are things that government is not doing. So government is not looking at structure. And now let's go to the state government. Mm -hmm. Justin, since President Tinubu came to power, the, 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 the allocation from the federation account has tripled. Mm. They have tripled because those days they used to complain about uh, reduction in terms of payment of subsidy, but that is no more in existence. So it has tripled. So they cannot say that they can uh, they've not been uh, they cannot pay because they are, all the three tiers of government revenue have tripled. I mean, when system Tinubu comes in, they share revenue over over trillions or trillions. It never happened like that before. So they can't say they don't have funding. They say they don't have funding for developmental project and. When you see what the state government spend in terms of uh, for things that are not developmental, things that are too much yeah. infrastructure, things that are for their political appointee, things that are for their political future. And you know the bad thing is that these civil servants knows all these things. They have the numbers. That's why the civil servants can come out and say the House of Representatives, this is the amount that they are earning. And the House could come out to defend themselves and say they are being emotional, but yet could not even say whether those amount that they are, are okay, this is not the amount that we are earning, this is the amount we are earning. So it tells you that the civil servants knows a lot that we don't know until they bring it to the public preview. So I think um, governments should be very, very sincere. They should know that um, you don't increase cost of living and you don't increase the revenue. Ordinary would have been easy. Um, you look at inflation at 34 percent, and you're giving them almost a hundred percent increments in their salary, would have said, worry. But mm. again, Justin, you and I know that that is the official inflationary rate. Mm -hmm. The real rate, and even in, with their own numbers, food inflation is about 41%. That's only for food inflation. Mm -hmm. Part of housing, housing has gone up, especially people that live in Lagos. Give you an instance. Lagos State Government used to subsidize transportation. Just last week, they said they are no more subsidizing transportation. So that cost of, of movement also has gone up. So that would translate to cost of uh, uh, goods or service. Again. So we must look at it holistically and begin to tell ourselves the truth. In mm. those states that say they will pay 70000 If you, whether you call it political or because of politics, you as the federal government and you as state, even those states should pay 70000 What stop Lagos 
Mm. What stop rivers? What stop uh, and delta? Yeah. Some of these states, yeah, you could have sympathy for the northern states, but again, you could also say they are, they are like I said, their allocation has tripled. Mm -hmm. And then they need to look at internally. Because some of the wastage that this government do the, through the internal generated revenue, they don't even portion it to any project. It's just like money left for political appointees to do whatever they want to do with it. True. So government should be prudent. And once the civil servants know that governments are prudent, mm. they won't be so forceful in their demands. They know what they are saying. They right. know what they are saying. That's why they are so, so forceful at a particular amount. And right. they come out with facts and figures. Mm. If you increase eligible tariff by almost 300%, if you receive re re um, increased fuel, almost 500%. So why are you not saying you cannot even give a living wage or a minimum wage of over, let me say, 100,000 or 90,000? Mm -hmm. That could be substantiated. All but right. when you are telling them you will pay 62,000 and already you are already giving them 65,000 and the cost of living has not gone down. Hmm. So what are we talking about? I think government should be sincere. All right. Just before we leave uh, the minimum wage talk and move to uh, other topics right now. So as it is right now, is it still hanging in the balance with um, everyone uh, waiting for what the president uh, would do? He had asked for the, you know, the template uh, from the from the minister of finance and all of that. So what do we really see happening now in the uh, the next uh, couple of hours or the the next day? Or what do we what are we likely to see since everything is just hanging on the shoulders of the president right now? Today is the D day, so we we'll know whether the president. <laughs> Um, <laughs> will come out with anything even, but if it's coming out with 62 naira, 62,000 minimum wage, oh. I don't think Labour is going to accept it. Uh, oh. I, I, I'm, I made to understand that the Minister of Finance gave him different template. Oh. I'm sure he must have given him a template of 62,000. Oh. He must give him a template of another amount, and so the President needs to look at it holistically, okay. and then begin to take the right decision, because Nigeria cannot afford another strike. All right. Fine, let's move away from uh, labor matters and talk about uh, trade now. The nation's trade surplus rose to 6.52 trillion naira in the first quarter of this year. What does this really mean? Because I'm looking at how, you know, poorly the naira is actually performing in the international forex market. So what does this really translate to? Are we doing well economically in terms of trade? Yes. You could say we are doing well because, again, trade surplus, that means we have exported a lot more than what we imported into oh. the country. But now look at it. Uh, the way you look at it, uh, real, realistically, or what we call the real economy, what were oh. we exporting? If you look at that report, it's largely driven by petroleum product. Uh -huh. That's crude oil, uh, natural, ga natural gas. Uh, if you look at agriculture, the percentage is very, very small. So what you're saying there is uh, we are exporting raw materials, crude oil. It's not the finish. We are not, we are not exporting refined petroleum products that could go into various uh, 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 products that also end us type. So what we do is that we now export this um, uh, petroleum uh, uh, crude oil. They now refine it and bring it back to us, and we are buying it at a high cost. So, and again, why we are seeing that surplus has to do with the exchange rate that has gone up. It doesn't mean that we have done something remarkably different. Oh. When you look at the figures at the time before now, exchange rate was less. They're looking at an exchange of about 1,500. Last year at this time, exchange rate was about 700, 800. So it's not that we have done anything fantastically different. It's just oh. that they, they, because of the devaluation of the currency, that has helped us to, to look like if we, are, we, are, we, are, we have exported um, uh, more of this product. Oh. Um, outside the shore of this country right. and also that has even make our product a little bit more cheaper because cheaper, when you yes. look at the exchange rate and we're on our product that we are expecting we are becoming more or less a very very cheap economy and unfortunately it, it, you know sometimes i said when china said they want to devalue america mm. will shiver and say that you cannot devalue because they will now ship up a lot of their products into the american market which yeah. is cheap so, but in our own case, what we are chipping out is refined petroleum product, right. and again, we are not. It's not not something that has really have a, a intrinsic value okay. in terms of um, adding to our economy. 
All right, uh, uh, Mokta, finally, let's talk about uh, what some people have termed um, banking blunders, uh, the lessons to be learned from what happened uh, yesterday with uh, Heritage Bank, the license uh, revocation and the NDIC promising uh, that, um, you know, uh, those who have um, funds uh, in the bank would actually be compensated. But what are the lessons to be learned in the wake of uh, the CBN's uh, recapitalization, uh, uh, you know, program going on uh, are the banks in the financial sector in your opinion stable and uh, what does this really mean for the sector would this happen and there are fears that it's not just about them um, heritage bank what are your thoughts really my my, my fear is uh, the cbn came out after the multi policy meeting and said all banks are very healthy uh -huh. and three weeks after we're hearing that the bank um, they are revoking a license of, of, of Heritage Bank. So that does not give the International Committee uh, uh, um, uh, confidence, uh, uh, confidence mm. in whatever the CBN will be saying. The major they are just saying it for sake. sake. That is one. Two, global best practices these days, you don't see bank goes on that. I give you an example. Remember the Silicon Bank in, mm -hmm. a, in the U.S., which was largely a bank that was Credit into crypto yes. trading, and it went under. What did the government do? They have a branch in the U.K., the government makes sure that the, 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 the every um, customers do not lose money. Mm. They make sure that every customer is paid. It's, they, 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 they took over the bank. Even the bank branch in the UK was bought by the UK government for one pound. Mm. That's just to protect their citizens' form. So the new normal in terms of revocation of licenses are not what the CBN is doing. The CBN is still doing the old normal. You forget the license. NDIC comes to pay the maximum amount of five million. So any business that have up to 10 million, 50 million, that business is gone. So what the government normally look at, they look at the larger picture. This bank have, have um, most of these banks were poorly run. So what do you do? You try to recover some of those funds, and this bank have assets assets then you could sell those assets later on or you could sell this bank mm. to individuals to recapitalize this bank now you are going to recapitalization and you 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 should have said okay we are going to recapitalize let's see how you can survive yeah. with your assets are you going to get investors to come in to buy into mm. into this bank as the best so that every customer's funds are protected right. normally the only thing they tells you about the bank this is when the bank goes on that they say that the investors will lose their money. Mm. But the new normal in terms of um, banking uh, um, processes is that you don't allow a bank go under because of the times and seasons that we are that is very tough economically. So you don't want your yeah. citizens to lose their money no matter how much. Mm. So we have we still have Amcom. Why didn't you sell this bank to Amcom? Why didn't you get Amcom going up? So there's more to the what the CBN has done. I'm not saying that what the bank has done is, mm. uh, is good. They've, they've actually... Um, don't have shareholders funds they've not been able to to do um, and uh, uh, um, um, do clearing the cbn windows we're made to understand it was even first bank that was helping them otherwise long time ago but why did you wait this long and why didn't you take those actions all right why didn't you get him you did it in, with keystone bank you okay. did it with polarized bank so i don't think any bank will go under as it stands now because the two banks that are really having challenges keystone bank and polarized bank yeah. They are under the offices of CBN. So if you say those two banks are going to go under, okay. that means the CBN has a lot to tell us. All right, Mokta, I wish we could indeed go on, but uh, we are out of time. I must say a very big thank you to you for um, the insights that you have provided on the show today. We do appreciate them. Thank you, Justin. All right, that's the size of the show for today. Let's do it another time. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. <laughs>